He's right there. You see him? Oh. Oh, he's a nice fish. Uh, he came up ever so slowly out of nowhere. <laughs> Sight fishing for these big pike, you just can't beat it. Northern Saskatchewan, home of countless rivers and lakes. Our journey takes us to the ninth largest lake in North America, Reindeer Lake. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. When it comes to trophy northern pike fishing. That's a big back on this guy, wow. It doesn't get any better than this. When they call something pike country, this is pike country. Hey everybody, it's Jeff Parks with the new Fly Fisher. We're up here in northern Saskatchewan on Reindeer Lake, staying at the beautiful Reindeer Lake Lodge. fly fishing for massive northern pike. And when I say massive. 42 and a half. Cool. Wow. Well, this is the big leagues. They don't get much bigger than they do right here. And we're hoping for some top water action also. So grab yourself a beverage, get comfy, because this episode starts right now on the new Fly Fisher. Nice. All right. Ooh, that's a nice sized fish. Uh, Ooh, oh my God. Uh, <laughs> the new Fly Fisher is supported by Tourism Saskatchewan. Scientific Anglers. Trout Unlimited. WeatherTech Canada. As an avid trout fisherman like myself, the thought of northern pike fishing seemed a little daunting. Yet I heard that our destination, Reindeer Lake, was in a league of its own, the big league, and I was up for the challenge. Reindeer Lake Lodge was our home for the week. And we were welcomed by owners Dave and Wanda and their fine staff as we arrived. This is an awesome facility with all the comforts of home. It didn't take long before we were suited up and on the water with our guide, Robert. start this way because I saw a couple this way. So we're starting off today in one of the countless bays that this, uh, this reindeer lake has. And as I've been looking out here, I've sighted probably at least three, three pike, probably 43, 44 inches already uh, as we're just getting set up. So let's see how we do and see if we can connect onto some of these uh, big bruisers. One. 
you know what? Oh, he came off. That was a good sized fish too. Let's see if there's another one right here. Just a nice little hidey hole for some uh, pike right here. Yeah, the drop offs. Yeah. There's one. Oh, Hello, come on, boy. take it again. Right there. That's too bad. That one was a pretty good fish. How big you think it was there, Jeff? Uh, it was in the 40s, buddy. Wow. Just hiding. The, what a great spot for uh, this would be a fantastic brook trout area right here. Mm -hmm. There's one. Oh. There he was good. Oh. Come on. Yeah, see, they're not. They're not getting stuck on this. No, they're not, no. They're not getting stuck on this fly. Hold on here. One more. I may have to change this fly. I love this drop-off area here. I bet there's some monsters in this bay. Yeah, they're not getting stuck on this fly. No, I gotta, they're not. I gotta, I gotta change this fly over. What do you think? This, uh... Yeah, try the black one. I like the black. Is that... Yeah, that'll work. Okay, let's give that a go. I've always said that a good fly can make a difference. But a good fly with the right presentation can set you up for an epic day. Small guy. <laughs> did you get that? <laughs> Little did I know that when I switched to the gold and black Murdich Minnow, that this was going to be the fly of the trip. Ah, small guy. Duck. With this pattern, the hits just kept coming. What a playground this lake is here. There are countless bays to creep into and try our luck. There's a lot of dark shapes down there. Sure, if that's him or not. Not sure if this is the guy that I was going after, but he's a good size. There's about two or three down there that were really big. It's hard to tell underwater. And they got some, these things are not sluggish at all. Let's see if I can get around the boat this side. Yeah, see if I can get him this way, buddy. Wow, these things are, uh, these things are full of power. I gotta just stick this one right into my gut and fish this guy. All right. I think we can get this guy in here now, buddy. Boy, when they annihilate a fly, I'd hate to be a white fish or something in here. At first. Oh, come on. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Get in there. Get in the net. Nicely done, buddy. So the important part about any kind of fishing is a hook set, a good hook set. But more importantly, we're, we're fishing for pike today. And to get a good hook set on these hard mouths is, is vital, you need to. So how to get a good hook set uh, when you're casting and uh, you get the fly out there, you have to have no slack between your trigger finger here 
and that fly. Meaning, if your rod tip is up higher like this, you see that bow? That fish is gonna hit and there's gonna be a split second where I, I may miss that, I may miss that hit. And with these hard mouths, they're gonna spit it out right away. So when you're casting to these fish, put your rod tip down right away. Always have your trigger finger at the ready because you want, if you have no slack between that fly and your trigger finger right here, as soon as that fish hits, strip and, and dig it into their mouths as much as you can. Strip and dig it into the mouths and that's gonna give you a fantastic hook set rather than having your rod tip high and then trying to do a, a strip set. And that'll set you up for a great hook set on these massive big pike. Good to, go. Good to go. Just trying to see if I can see any more torpedoes and looking at it. Come on. Oh, this just took off from there. Did you see him? No, see that? I, he I, just I took off from there. Didn't There's see a cloud him. of smoke there. Or Another good there. size? No, I didn't see. All I saw was the smoke. Ah, oh, darn. Oh, he took off! The big fish took off! That is a good fish. Good eyes on that one, Robert. Uh -huh. Big fish. This is one that's got a little bit more girth. Do you want me it. to use a dip net on him or the cradle? Ah. Uh, cradle on this, I think, on this one. Okay. So when you. We're just in these, we're just in these shallows and we're just, we're not casting until we actually see one. So when you get here, bring some good Polaroid glasses because you're going to want to pinpoint the ones that you're going to want to catch. doesn't mean you're going to get them because the other, some of the smaller ones will come in and, and get them, get that fly ahead of these bigger ones. But this is... We were looking at this guy. I don't know how big he is yet. But these are all trophy pike. All right, buddy, I'll see if I can bring them over. This one's got a little bit more girth than the last one. Wow, look at that. Come on, buddy. Turn your head, turn your head. Hard to turn them to in there. Turn your head, turn your head, turn your head. There he is. Oh, there we go. Nicely done, buddy. If you like sight fishing, then this is your paradise. What about this one? Is that a fish? Or is that a log? It's like a pretty good one, right? See him right there? There, yeah, it's hard to tell. Okay, that's a nice fish. You got oh, he didn't get that. There's a couple of 30 inches over here. A couple right here. How are these guys smaller? He's not 30 plus, 32, 34. Okay, what about this guy over here? Um, that one is smaller. Well, they're smaller, eh? Smaller, yeah. It's too bad that guy had that in his mouth. This is just ridiculous. Uh, nothing over here. No, they're over there. It's funny how they're not really scared of the boat. No, they're not, they're not. It seems to be a pretty good sized one right here. I'm gonna try this one. There, he's got to look at it. Ah. Wow. <laughs> 
sight fishing for these big pike, you just can't beat it. Call something pike country, this is pike country. When you've exhausted one bay, there are countless others to explore. We move farther north up the lake in search of the next big northern. in here. That one pretty big right there. Right there. I can't see. It looks all right over here. Yeah. Might as well give that a go. Just right along this bank looks just so good. Mm -hmm. Ready for some popper action, buddy? Right underneath it. Getting more action underneath it, though. We just saw, there he is right there. Come on, take it. I just want to throw it in this, just this down this alley here, right here. Still underneath it, he's right underneath it. It's a good size. So the northerners like the top water. Yes, sir. to like being right over here eh, at this edge. That was a bigger fish that came after that one. Good sized fish looking at that one. Top water uh, eat is on today. That's nice. A couple missed really good sized fish. This little guy here just couldn't resist this little frog pattern. Let me try one more just on those rocks.
Some great top water action today with some epic intense fights. But we decided to go back under to entice something bigger. All right, I'll toss one out here and see if we can get a lunch size. <laughs> well, I've got this drag set pretty high. This guy's moving. And he's taking out a lot of line. Wow. I think this could be our one we've been looking for for a bit. We'll see how big this guy is. It's got a big tail to it. And he's still going. This is tough on the arms, these fish. I just saw this guy in amongst all the small ones. And when we've been targeting these, these big guys, the small ones just come in. And small ones meaning 34, 35, 36 inch. And take it before these guys do. But this guy, I saw him follow it. And we'll see what we got here. Let's see if I can pour them in a little bit. Nicely done, buddy. That's a nice fish. It's a bigger one of the uh, day. Wow. What a great battle with this fish. Time to get out and get close and personal with it. That is our biggest so far this trip. Uh, 45, 44, you think? Yes. Robert? Yes. Wow. And you know what? That took me right into my backing, almost into my backing. And I, I don't usually hear that when you, uh, when you talk about pike. Now I got to pick this up and put it back, revive it. And to actually handle these things with this size, absolutely mind numbing. This lake does not disappoint. Time for a late lunch. With a late lunch in our bellies, we were hoping for one more great fish before we push back to the lodge. There's a decent one over here. Thought that was one. I didn't even see that one. I did. I saw. I actually saw. It was that one over there I was looking at, I think. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. There you go. Oh, he's gone. Darn it all. Ah, the old under the boat trick. <laughs> I've seen it before. Darn it all. That was a nice, probably 36 inch, but just thick fish. Gotta be one by that long. Mm. Mm, this is a nice one.
just saw a cloud of a uh, cloud of dust from the bottom here. It just took off and just saw the boat. And I was able to get a quick cast at this one. This is a great place to fish for these pike in this bay. There's uh, normally lots of structure, but, and they get caught up in the structure. But there's just nothing here but sandy, sandy bottom. And this guy was just sitting there on the sandy bottom. I'll see if I can, so he's not getting caught up at all in anything. Okay, here he comes, pal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There he comes. Come on, come on. I'm trying to get him. There he is. And too deep, too deep. Turn. Let's turn that guy around. This should be the final turn, I'm hoping. Nicely done, buddy. Look at him. I think he was 43, 46. This fish here is as good as it gets. Sure, they come bigger, but a 47 inch gator is as impressive as they come. Wow, that was my biggest uh, northern pike to date. We measured that quickly, that was 47 inches. And when I saw the, the cloud of dust, I just saw the tail on that and thought it looked big. Didn't think it was that big. Threw the fly maybe 10 feet past it, where I thought it might be. It turned, I did see it turn, thinking we got ourselves a good fish. And when it hit it, it there was just uh, no turning back on that one. That was, that was, it's it's hard to talk when you land 47 inch northern like that it's it almost gets you shaking and i know there's bigger ones in here time to head back to the lodge for a much needed hot shower beverage and dinner Coming back to a comfortable professional lodge means everything after a fun, tiring day of fishing. Reindeer Lake Lodge is as comfortable as it comes with cozy cabins, internet, full fun service lounge, and amazing food. After a terrific sleep, a hearty breakfast was in order. I've always said, I'm not sure what I like best, fishing or food. If the lodge has both, then I'm one happy man. What a difference a day makes, however, as we were greeted with clouds and rain. We decided to work the topwater application in this gloomy weather, and we were pleasantly surprised.
good swirl on that one. Is there another one there? Yeah, I just missed it again. Maybe it's a cloud cover, I don't know, but it's right there. There he's, yeah. it was a pretty big swirl. Yeah, a couple more cuts, and as I said, if you want to move, we can. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll try top water on the next part. Okay, buddy. I was beginning to wonder if I had a hook on as I wasn't sticking too many fish. It was as though they were just pushing it out of their area. So we've had some uh, some really good success out here. Dark day, rainy, and we've been on top and we've had some really good success. And I was starting out a little bit being pretty quick with the popper and decided to really switch it up. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm casting it out and I'm letting it sit for about the amount of time that I'm speaking right now. Then I give it two big pops then I'm just gonna let it sit. I'm probably gonna let it sit for maybe about, uh, maybe 10 seconds, five, eight, 10 seconds, somewhere, but give it a, a chance for those fish to regroup and turn around and look at it. Then after I do that, what I've done is some very soft little touches with it, just to kind of move the fly so it goes bloomp, 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 like this. And then wait again, and then boom, boom, with a couple good hits to it to get their attention. Same thing, let it sit, maybe five, six, seven seconds. Then a couple small little rod tip twitches to make it just move a little. Another one hit to make it look loud and keep it in the water as long as you can. And we've had a few hit right at the boat. So I just sometimes just keep moving it because we can see them following this. So that's a really good method. Send it out, let it sit for a couple seconds, hit a couple big pops on it, then let it sit for maybe eight to 10 seconds with some small little little uh, motions with that fly um, as you're bringing it in with one or two bigger ones. That seems to really get these guys hitting that fly. So life was pretty simple out here when it comes to equipment for our trip here. Nine weights, that's all you need. These fish are really big. I would not bring an eight weight. Uh, you could bring a 10 weight, but honestly, that's gonna be a little bit tough to cast. So nine weight is the way to go. And what we did is we coupled that with a nine weight, weight forward line, floating line. I do have an intermediate sinking line thinking it might have to go a little bit deep, but realistically, we were getting these fish in anywhere from a foot to four feet. So the floating line is fine and it's a lot easier to cast. What I did, attached to that is I kept the leader very short. And what I used was a figure eight leader, which is about 30 inches of 50 pound. And attached to that, it's probably 14 or 15 inches or so of a 40 pound uh, bite wire. And really that's, that's because these, these fish are coming right to the boat and you need to have this short so you can move it around in that figure eight motion. And if you can do that, that's the best. You can bring some longer ones, but have the, have the shorter leaders. Keep it a lot shorter. It's a lot easier to cast also. Just a little bit about the flies. We use quite a lot of different uh, combinations, whites, some blacks and reds, just some good old uh, bait patterns. But what really worked well for us, one of my favorite uh, lures is the, the black and gold Repella. This Murdich minnow in that gold and black absolutely rocked. You have to bring a few of these uh, few of these patterns in. Bring about four or five if you're here for four days because they're gonna eat through one a day. They, they lasted pretty good, but we were catching about 50, 60 fish. So make sure you have a color combination of, of, of the Rapella style gold and black on these Murdich minnows because these are the way to go. 
So on the surface, we use a little, lot of Dahlberg divers, but they get a little bit heavy. These work really well, but they get heavy as they get wet. So if you can get away with it, we always use something lighter when you're casting with a nine weight. Just a nice foam head popper, not too big. These worked exceptional. These worked as well as the Dahlbergs. So if you can get away with something lighter, toss that. Another brilliant fishing day with most hits on top. Back to the lodge for another much needed recharge. Dave and Wanda run their lodge like a tight ship. No minor detail is overlooked. Reindeer Lake is world renowned for, for fishing. That's kind of the reason we bought it. We're at the north end of the lake, which means the lake is about 2 million acres, and we have about 1.3 million of those 2 million acres uh, for our fishing grounds. So the fishing is second to none. That's probably the most important thing. What we try to do is try to offer as much luxury up in northern Canada as possible. Our cabins have uh, hotel quality beds. We try to outfit them with uh, Keurigs for coffee, easy coffee in the morning, um, kind of everything you'd expect in a hotel, just to make the, the guest stay as comfortable as possible. When you book a trip, included is airfare to and from Saskatoon as well as the boats, the guides, pretty much everything is covered that way. If you're interested in coming to Reindeer Lake Lodge, you uh, just give us a call or an email or through our website our contact form. From there, we give you some dates and then you have to get yourself to Saskatoon the day or, or afternoon before your trip starts. If we send an itinerary about a week before, the next morning you get up and our charter takes off from Saskatoon and uh, you end up at Reindeer Lake Lodge. We have a private strip here, really close to the lodge. There's no long boat ride or there's no uh, bus ride. It's uh, many of the guests just walk off the plane right to the lodge. It's nice and close. When you wake up in the morning at Reindeer Lake Lodge, you can just brew yourself, uh, whether you like black coffee, uh, tea, hot chocolate in your Keurig. You have the privacy of your cabin to have that early morning coffee or you're welcome to come down to the big lodge. We're always up early and the coffee's always on. When you're coming in for breakfast, we always have a table set up with pastries and uh, various juices and whatnot before we serve a hot breakfast around 7 a.m. When you get off the boat at the end of the day, we have cocktail hour at 5 p.m. We have a pool table and uh, uh, foosball, just uh, a nice big lounge area that you can just relax and you'll smell the wonderful uh, aromas coming from the kitchen and uh, we have a beautiful dinner that we serve every evening at 6.30 p.m. We start around June 12th and we end usually end of August. We're quite a ways up north so we don't go much into September. The weather can be good or it can be bad. You can't beat the fishing here. We have people come from all over. They come for the first time, and there are repeat customers after that. And the main thing they tell us is, especially if you're a pike fisherman, the northern pike is just, just second to none. In a minute, that's about it. The anticipation of a fresh new day is always exciting. Today was no exception. Nicer weather and a new guide to show us around. Peter is as professional as they come and his knowledge of the lake was top notch.
What a bay. This is uh, nice looking stuff right here. Finicky. Under for a while. Maybe go under? I think so. What a different a day makes. Yesterday they were on top and we moved one, but that's it. So we're gonna go underneath, see if we can find something with uh, looking for some meat. Try one out here, buddy. On the other side here. Seems to be quiet in here, eh? Pretty good size one right there. This is a nice fish. But it's doing the uh, large predator swim around. Finally uh, moved a pretty good fish here again. It's just been a little bit slow with what you expect out here this morning, but this is this one's a this one's got some weight to it. Yeah, this might be uh, this might be pitcher worthy. worthy. I think he's getting tired, I think, Peter. Peter brought us into this bay and the last thing he just said, he said, you know what? I know there's some big fish in here. Here she comes right here. There she goes right there. I bet that saw the net. Yeah, it's got a big back on it, this one. I think I got him coming at you, buddy. He doesn't like you, Peter. <laughs> Nicely done. Well, that's pretty big. Well, take a look at this guy. Girl, whatever, beauty, around 40-ish, and just a healthy fish. Fell to another, uh, that same fly, that Murdich minnow, in that uh, those brown colors. Just a beauty. So when you come up here, it was kind of cool this morning, so I got about three liters on. Right now I'm cooking. I'm not sure it's because I, I got that last fish, but it's, it's cooking right now. So just remember when you come here, lots of layers. T-shirts, lay another layer, sweaters, just to keep yourself nice and warm. That's all you need. We're doing the ultimate sight fishing here. The, um, we're just cruising the flats of these, of these bays here, and it's just like in the salt water. As you're, 
as we're cruising around, there's a couple of things that you got to remember. Really, when you're when we're coming up to a, a certain fish, they're going to just dart away very quickly. So you need maybe about 15, 18 feet of line. Try not to have too much more because if you're anything like me, you're going to step on your line and try to cast and it's going to go four feet. The less amount of line you can have underneath you is, the, is better. But more importantly is when that fish, when it takes off and it goes this way, they're, they're not going to go that far. They seem to take off quick and then they stop and, and turn around a little bit. So when you were sending your fly towards them, I don't care if you're a beginner, intermediate, or even an expert, the number one rule for trying to get good accuracy towards these fish is that the fly follows the rod tip. So be very mindful of the rod tip when you're looking at that, that departing pike. What you wanna do is point your rod tip right at it and send the fly towards it. Try to make a slap on the water with, this, uh, with these big flies. And what that does, that turns them around. Uh, they, 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 they hone in on it. Let it sink for two seconds, then a nice little, one little jerk with it. Let it sink again, and then a couple jerks as though it's almost seized the pike and it wants to get away. That usually is what triggers the, uh, those pike to, to, uh, to hit. So try that, but the th main thing is be mindful and wherever you point your rod tip, that's where the fly is gonna go. Sorry, buddy. He's probably long gone. You see him? Yeah, there he is. Right there. Come on. Oh, he doesn't want anything to do with me. That was a big boy. Yeah, he didn't want to do it. Look at the size of that guy. So we uh, just sighted probably the biggest one so far. Peter says maybe around 48, 49. I'm going to say 50, 51, of course but it was big. It looked at our fly, but it didn't take. So I'm, I am gonna change over to my fly. It's the fly that we did have on, a little bit beat up. So going to a brand new, again, pattern. Same pattern, seems to be doing really well for us, but this one is completely new and it's not, uh, hasn't had anything uh, biting, bitten off of it or any uh, little pieces off of it. So we'll see if we can find something in this new bay here. Cruising the flats, there is nothing better. Boy, it looks like a perfect habitat right here, eh? Come on, fishies, where are you? Doesn't get better than the sight fishing. That was quick. Oh, this is a nice fish. Got a big back on this guy. Just got this guy on the lip. Guys can pull. That's a big back on this guy. Wow. 
and he's not happy. There's another one right down there. Just, well, that's even bigger, that one right there. Holy moly. And it's not moving. It's just watching this whole show. All right, here we go. I think. Yeah. Oh. Just right on the corner of the mouth, eh? What is that? No, that's 45 inches. That's 45 inches. Hey, it weighs more like 45 inches. <laughs> wow. The ultimate in sight fishing. We just did a, quite, a quick uh, measurement on this fella and 45 inches, just a big back on it. And this guy's scarred up. He's been, he's been fighting up quite a, quite a storm out there. But one of the cool things was there was another fish underneath just watching the whole show that had to have been three or four inches bigger. And we're gonna go back and try that. But let's take a look at this thing and uh, take a look and just see how just to see how beautiful these things are. We went back to look for the bigger fish, but she had moved on. So we moved to another bay where these fish began to take a toll on my arm and shoulder. Now I'll give it a couple blind casts. Right there. Wow. Nice eyeballs. Good size. Yeah. Oops, sorry, buddy. Another beauty. It seems that the late afternoon bite in the heat of the day can produce some big gators. Our final good fish of the trip was a beauty. I said it once, and I'll say it again, there is nothing better than cruising these shallow bays sight fishing for northern gators. We did one last sweep in this bay here for some sight fishing and came out with this beautiful 45 and a half inch brute. What a fish.
Reindeer Lake is truly an absolute playground for northern pike. This is the big leagues. You couple this fishery with Reindeer Lake Lodge and you have yourself the perfect fly fishing adventure of a lifetime. Well, that's it for us this week at Reindeer Lake Lodge. If you need me, I'll be icing my arm and my shoulder for the next month. What an incredible fishery this is. To be able to sight fish for 45, 46 inch plus northern pike is absolutely mind blowing. Dave and Wanda have absolutely nailed it here. Comfortable cabins, the lodge and the food, well, they're incredible. The guides here are so professional. They're trained to get you into lots of fish. But more importantly, they're trained to get you into some big fish. That's what they do. For more information on this show, please contact us at thenewflyfisher.com. And until then, keep fishing. The New Fly Fisher is supported by Tourism Saskatchewan, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada. <laughs>